I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. So the verdict's in on Kyle Rittenhouse, and a lot of you want to know my opinion. And very shortly, I'm going to give you that. But first, listen. To start putting your own self-protection package together to make you and your family that much safer, please go to timlarkin.com, sign up for the free masterclass, start getting this information now. Also, if you like these videos, they take a lot of work, so please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and most importantly, share this information with somebody who's interested in self-protection. All right, getting to Kyle Rittenhouse. Um, I've not said much about this for a reason, meaning I wanted it to all play out. I knew how hot it was in the media. I also have a lot of people giving me reports from that area, kind of, you know, with all the information. Um, it's been very interesting to see what's been released, what hasn't been released, how this has been colored. So I'm going to be very clear on the five counts that were, that he had got not guilt, not guilty on that overall is a very good thing for self-defense law. Okay, there's no question in my mind that once the action started, once everything happened, that Kyle was devoid of choice and uh, had to use his weapon to protect himself. What I think is egregious is the fact that, you know, the only questions are being asked of him. Why was he there that night? What was his motivation? Where was he? I used, you know, basically being vilified for the most part in the in the um, media prior to the conviction, prior to the uh, um the not guilty verdict, um, because all the all the facts were were out there, and, and reporters could have got it all in. Also, the background of the individuals that he shot. Listen, not a not a justification, but we had a child molester who anally raped children. You had a career criminal, um, domestic violence. You know, these were not good people, yet they were they were treated as heroes, as victims, as, as poor, you know, poor protesters that were just there. You know, I just think the dishonesty is not helping anything. Not that that's a reason to be um, for the shooting, because to me, I'm going to come back to my overall opinion, which, of course, you guys are probably already know what it is, is this all came down to choice, not once the incident happened, once the incident happened, there was only one way it could play out. You know, it was violence. But what was interesting on both parties, and I'm very consistent on this, I said the same thing in the Trayvon Martin, um, you know, shooting. Both parties could have made different choices. You know, they chose to be where they were at that night. As a parent, I can't imagine dropping my 17 year. I'm a, I'm a father of two sons. I cannot imagine dropping my son off at 17 with a semi-automatic rifle, med gear, and just dropping off saying, good luck, son. You know, go fight the good fight. Um, that's my opinion. I just don't think that was a smart parenting choice. And uh, I'm not... You know, I'm very comfortable saying that. On the other side, it just looked like those guys were just looking for trouble. One guy, literally, it was the day he was released, you know, and so you had a lot of issues on, on both sides. So I, you know, again, listen, I don't expect anybody to be happy with anything I'm saying right now. I know some people will be like, yeah, you know, they're, they're all ridden house. Listen, I think there's enough on each side to just say, guys, this stuff doesn't have to happen. And this is what happens with all this polarization that we've got going on right now. Remember, when you have a choice, the choice is always safety. That means no matter how emotionally, you know, drawn up you get, you stay at your house. You don't have to go into the streets unless you are being threatened personally, meaning unless they're coming to your house, unless they're coming and, and you're devoid of choice or you're in your car and you're getting attacked or, or something where it's imminent, where you didn't willingly go to a place to participate in what you know is going to be a heated issue. Um, I have these conversations all the time. And what's interesting is the people that just want to be left alone, the people that are very well trained, a lot of them veterans, um, we all have the same discussion. Like, why would I ever go there? Why would I ever go there armed? You know, there's, there's only one good reason I'd ever do that, and that would be to protect myself and my family. Um, so it, it's things to consider because, listen, I believe if all parties had a choice 
to say, hey, we want things to go down that way that day, you know, that three three day choice, I'm sure they all would have made different choices. Kyle, even though he has the not guilty, he has to live with that the rest of his life. You know? And it, it has nothing to do with right or wrong. It just has to do with the fact you gotta live with the fact that you use violence to save your life. And a lot of people, that's a hard thing for them to recover from. So again, none of this stuff should be taken lightly, but this is another exact, excellent, excellent example of, yes, the law came out on the side of self-defense in what was actually by the law, fairly clear cut. You know, there's, there's really little, little dissension. It would, it would have had to have been a political decision to go else, elsewhere with the law. And on the other side, you have to sit there and go, why? Why are we at this point where we're, we're willingly putting ourselves in danger to where we end up in situations like this? It just seems insane. Um, again, these are my opinions. I look at it from a father's standpoint. I look at it from a um, protector standpoint. I look at it from a instructor standpoint and what I would instruct to my clients. And again, you know, I'm very happy the way it turned out for Kyle Rittenhouse because I do believe it was absolutely justified in the act itself, what he did. But I'm really disappointed that he didn't get better guidance on what to do that night and where to be. Because um, it's a hell of a responsibility to put on your shoulders, you know, when he was 17 at the time. So anyways, listen. Now, more than ever, it's important for you to get your self-protection strategy together because... Folks, it doesn't look like this is going to calm down anytime soon. It looks like we're going to be having more of these types of issues, more unrest, more provoca uh, pro provocation on both sides. So you need to have a plan and you need to make sure that you know exactly what you will and won't do when it comes to protecting yourself and your family. In order to do that, go to timlarkin.com, give us your email, start your free masterclass on putting together your personal self-protection strategy. Thank you. And until next time, be safe.